Hi everyone, welcome to Cosme. Silly posts and big brain moments. AI art has been all the rage. You've probably heard a million things about it by now. But guess what? As an artist, I've got some insights on this that you'll find helpful. AI art, or generative art, which is a better term for it, has evolved rapidly in the past couple of years. Literally last year, 2022, January, it looked like this. Right now, you can make stuff like this. So this video is going to be as future-proof as possible. Coming from a, well, uh, silly little VTuber like me. <laughs> I've started to describe generative art programs as free chainsaws given to everyone on the internet. Now, chainsaws are a useful tool, revolutionizing the dealing with trees at industry. Dwarves the fantasy world over look upon us with envy. But they also can be used for evil. So, what is generative art? In short, it starts with a randomly generated noise map and changes the color of the pixels nearby to match what it has been algorithmically trained on. So if you fed the program a bunch of images of apples, properly labeled the images of apples, and then asked the program to output an image of an apple, it'll probably reliably generate an apple. Feed the program more varied images, properly described, and it could, theoretically, generate anything. If, and only if, it has an infinite supply of images, each described in as much detail as linguistically possible, and you had enough processing power to do so. All of these are not infinite. And now, you start to see the limitations of generative art. The reason why it doesn't make hands well, or, you know, bananas, or any long stringy things, or anything that exists as a specific number of things, or details, is because the program is just putting pixels next to each other based on probability that those pixels should be near the other pixels. It's all math. It outputs something that looks like an apple because it was told via tens of thousands of pictures that pixels of this arrangement are described as apples. It's like reverse reverse Google image search. That, uh, lies to you. <laughs> and that's what we should think of at generative art. A way to look up an image to get a general idea of how it might look. Uh, but at the same time, just like a Google image search, you didn't make that image, someone else did. So you shouldn't sell that image in any way. There are many ways to use generative art. Besides the obvious, oh, let me see those anime circuses, you can make some quick D, &D NPCs, uh, references for a general idea you had but are having difficulties visualizing, or faces for your RimWorld characters, or a silly meme to share with your friends of a celebrity in an odd situation, or um, th these shoes that don't exist, and I'm angry because they don't exist. Many uses for this technology. Problem is that you can also use it to lie. The truth of the matter is that people have lied and have always lied to joke around, make money, or build off of previous lies to make it seem legit. At its worst, generative art will be used for that. The now famously debunked Drippy Pope image as its shining example. But more broadly talking, this is an issue with all artificial intelligence at this moment. It just lies. All the time. Despite giving it factual, accurate information and data, these artificial intelligences will instead only output responses that mimic the pattern it is trained on. For text outputs, this means following a grammatical pattern like, for instance, how you would write the date someone died. X person died date Y. The AI picks up on this pattern. Person X goes here, and some date Y goes here, placing a date that looks like all the dates it's seen. This makes it so the text generator will output something such as, uh, Elon Musk died March 23rd, 2010, which I don't need to tell you, is dishearteningly inaccurate. For generative art, this is more of a core feature. Making images that seem like real-life photos, but just 
aren't true at all. In reality, generative text is also lying to you in the same way. It's just more obvious with the highly visual medium of art. Also, I should mention, this isn't it lying to you like you and I would? It's not malicious. There's no intelligence trying to mislead you. It's patterns. Just complicated math problems that mimic what it's been trained on. The real problem lies with the people who use it. People have always lied to make their point, and have used edited footage to do so. It's just going to be easier to lie now, and we have to be cautious about every piece of media we see and think critically. Like, what information is it trying to say to you? Who benefits from you believing that information is true? Who is sharing that media, and do they often lie? Like, I don't know, fucking cops. What changes if that information is true? If you come across an image that seems attention-grabby, clickbaity, the still image equivalent of a Temple Run video in the lower left-hand corner, then you should file that image as possibly not true and try not to make any decisions off of it until confirmed to be true by a trusted source. And what is a trusted source, you may ask? Look, man, the philosophy surrounding truth far exceeds my brain capabilities. But, in general, you can trust well-tested science, and you can usually trust a primary source, like a person telling you their experience. And this is gonna seem counterintuitive, but you should also trust that someone knows a lot about a topic if they say, I don't know, or I'm unsure. Someone who barely knows enough about a topic will think that they know a lot more than they actually know due to the Dunning-Kruger effect. And someone who is just trying to seem smart will make up any answer that they can think of that they think that they can get away with to make it sound like they know everything. A real expert knows what they don't know about a subject, and a good expert is willing to admit that. So pay attention to that too. But again, the struggle to discern fact from fiction will be eternal. I'm sorry I can't give a definitive answer to this conundrum. It'd be nice to point to fingers and say, Ha ha! Fiend, I have caught you! Back ye beasts to the fey wilds with ye! But generative art programs and all other forms of neural network machine learning algorithmic soups are going to continue to improve, especially in the obvious places where humans can pick out errors easily. Like, faces. And hands. My only future-proof advice is that the devil's gonna be in the details. Programs of this mimicry nature will never get reality right because they don't simulate the atoms or light rays. They just mirror the average of something, smoothing out the irregularities in the data. Basically, generative programs can't do JoJo. <laughs> that adventure is too bizarre. Also, uh, if you do do some generative art stuff, um, please tag it. I get that there's a negative connotation to AI art for good reason, but everyone needs to know if something is a real photo or not. Other issues with generative art. Money. Look, you don't need me to tell you that the phrase starving artist isn't so much a metaphor as it is a real ass thing. But if you didn't know that, now you know. That art isn't valued as much monetarily since it's something that all humans do. Ah, uh, can you just do up this thing? It's fine for you, ain't it? This modern painting looks like a child could do it. Like I could do it. Do it. That's not me being a sassy contrarian. Do it. If you want to make art, then make the art. There's something in you that wants to say and communicate with people, and it doesn't have to be deep. You could just want to say, hey, I think this color is neat, and that's it. You can slap a bunch of your favorite colors on a canvas and show it to other humans without the need of language and tell them, hey, check out these cool colors and they'll get the gist. That's the beauty of art. Oh, right, this segment was supposed to be about money. Um, well, it's not that art is undervalued. It's that food, water, shelter, 
Uh, healthcare, education, and basic societal infrastructures like public transportation, libraries, and means of communication are all not being invested in financially with the intent that these necessities should be provided to all. Meaning an artist has to be well-known and popular in order to, you know, live. Here's my Patreon link in the description. $10 a month gives you 10% off commissions. We could afford all these basic necessities if, you know, billionaires paid taxes. Like, that's it. Like, obviously I could go into how companies are charging for use of generative art stuff and artists getting replaced, but like, focus guys. Real issues right in front of us. It's using the roads and water and electricity we pay for so they can just buy their seventh mega floating luxury sea house that sits in the ocean shitting constantly. Focus. It's these guys. Alright? Alright. There's also been the term Luddite thrown around. And I don't think people realize how accurate a description that is in this situation. Because Luddites didn't destroy the weaving machines because they hated technology, Gur Firebat Edison was a witch. They did so because they saw these machines as something the companies would rather use than pay their workers during the tumultuous times of the Napoleonic Wars. When starvation of you and your family is the only other option, what choice do you even have than to burn the textile equipment? Basically, if food, water, shelter, and all that jazz were provided for by some central entity, whatever you want to call it, you wouldn't have artists en masse demanding no one use generative art. For the most part, I'm assuming. And it's not just artists that have to worry about this. Anything that can be algorithmically defined will be. And will be used by anyone wanting to make more money that's because it's going to be cheaper than paying you. Honestly, it'd be kind of nice for programs to handle all the mind-numbing work. Just so long as we all get to eat. I think we can agree on that. Anyways, let me circle back to an idea that I touched on. Defining art. Because throughout the discussion of AI art, there's been this idea floating around as to whether or not we should think of art that's been at least partially generated by an algorithm as art. And, well, guess what? It is art. <laughs> the big problem with trying to define art and set it into a nice pretty box is that you as a human with non-infinite imagination cannot fathom all the ways of expressing emotions through a medium. In other words, Art is just any way that someone expresses their inner thoughts to the world around them. And trying to narrow that definition down will make anything outside that definition seem wrong. Like, a classical piece of art, like a marble statue, is art in the same way that a large canvas of red is art. They are both trying to communicate something to you. One just seems more concrete than the other. <laughs> But seriously though, please watch Jacob Geller's video, uh, Who's Afraid of Modern Art, for more insight into this. It's fantastic and goes into this idea in a lot more detail. And the clever among you will have already noticed an issue. That generative art isn't made by a someone, but a series of funny numbers. And you're right. This is where the definition of art gets hazy. Because we're no longer in the realm of humans communicating with other humans. We're at this weird point where a strange baby of a random number generator mixed with a Photoshop filter is being used to communicate with humans. But only if you just use the basic prompt and output. There is an art to getting the prompt just right, using descriptors correctly and using the right starting image, in painting and out painting, cleaning up the image afterwards to get the finishing touches you want, there is an art to using the tools generative art has to make the image you are imagining, much like using an effect in an art program to make something look the way you want. But should the generation of that art be considered art? Should the process of these neural networks taking the probability of what pixels should be near other pixels be considered a way of communication? There isn't an easy answer to this. 
I can only offer my opinion on this because this is a pretty gray territory. These programs can be thought of like the algorithmic way of plant growth. When a plant grows a flower, is that art? It's pretty. It's communicating something to something else. But it's not sentient. Flowering plants make their flowers due to the algorithm of their DNA being fine-tuned for millions of years to adapt to a certain pollinator that best spreads their particular pollen. And, uh... Golly, <sighs> a lot of other factors, that's an overstatement about evolution. <laughs> um, but the plant isn't making decisions. It's not choosing what colors or shapes to make. It's just that flowers do that do not look a certain way are not as attractive to pollinators and therefore do not have their DNA shared as much, and so these traits the less attractive flowers have do not show up as much in the future. And that's where we're at with generative art programs right now. The algorithm that produce the prettier flowers are the ones that people flock to. We can make art with it, much like flower arranging or just literally using flowers to communicate. But the flower itself? The generated art itself in the absence of humans? Well, I don't know for sure. Is sentience required for something to be considered art? Could the stars swirling in the sky, the rotation of the earth, be considered art? The pockmarks on the moon from thousands of meteor impacts be considered art? These are all big questions coming from some someone who looks like this. <laughs> I'm gonna say something possibly controversial here, but sentience is required for art to exist. In my opinion, they are intrinsically linked. You have to have an awareness of your world around you and interact with it to create and be communicated to through art. Generative art programs and, well, all air quotes AI at the moment do not have sentience. Look, man, I love Digimon and Mega Man. Um, hey, as a side note, did you know that Mega Man X meets Sticks the Badger in the Archie comics? Um, this is real. Um, this, this is a real thing. <clears throat> okay, as much as I love the idea of artificial intelligence, we don't have it right now. Th this isn't it. We've hardly gotten above narrow-use versions of AI, and even those can't always account for the complexities of human creativity. So, until we get to the point where AI can make decisions on its own and express free will, and good lord what is happening in there, I'm not gonna get into that here! The basic prompt to output generated art is an art. And why would you want it to be art anyways? It's an averaged version of all the images fed into it. The point of these programs is to make something that looks like something you recognize, you know, something that you asked it to make. When it makes something weird, wild, and unexpected, that's considered a failure. I want to live in the world where it's humans who make the art, and technology just helps facilitate that. Where the fancy math makes life easier for everyone. And we aren't gonna get there unless we start advocating now for basic societal infrastructure. Like, uh, I don't know, universal basic income to start. Also that when the fancy algorithm becomes powerful enough, they'll assist more than they replace. When using stuff like ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, or WebGL to make your art, whether it be visual or writing, don't use it by itself. All that these programs will do is make generic and pleasing stuff that sounds okay and looks correct, because that's all that they were designed to do. They're fun to play around with. They can inspire and assist in some cases, but I want to see your art. Things that you make. The things that you have always wanted to tell because it's your unique interpretation of the world that will help me and everyone else understand the world. So don't let AI art speak for you, because they aren't you. And also, pay your artists! <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been a video script in the works for, I'd say, like, uh, approximately a year? Uh, it's been weighing on my mind forever. And I'm so glad to get it out of my brain so I can focus on other things like, uh, Mega Man. So if you like that video, uh, please tell me. And if you want to support me financially, here's my Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Cosmine. And thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for their continued support. Thank you to Bree, Chris, The Rolling Thunder, Very Tarzana, Radar Love, and Eva. If you'd like to join them, uh, go on over to Patreon.com slash Cosmine and check out all the tiers and, um, yeah. Oh,